Hi, I'm Keith McGuire, Mark's behind the camera, and today we're going to paint a holiday greeting card. First things first, I start out, I go out and buy my envelope just because I want to know what size the card should be. Uh, I've found that envelopes tend to be very odd and humorous sizes, so go get them first, you know. That way it fits in the envelope nicely. Make sure it fits in the envelope nicely. And uh, it's just a better presentation when you hand it to somebody. So um, what I do is I, I get the size of the envelope. Uh, and I cut my paper accordingly, fold it in half. If you'll notice, I do a, the blue tape around the edge. What that's going to do is kind of give you like a border when the um, when the painting is finished. It gives it a nice finished look. Actually, it's very pretty. So I um, for this uh, first card, I am starting with uh, just a snowman, birch trees, little uh, little grass in the background, and some snow. So um, I'm going to begin. I might even throw a little trick or two in here just to make it interesting might use a little bit of sea salt or kosher salt uh, uh, depending on what you got laying around uh, coarse to create uh, some interesting textures in the uh, uh, picture itself but first I'm going to start uh, with uh, getting my paint out of my tray now uh, some of the colors I'm going to use are hmm, ultramarine blue I like it because well, that's not it. Okay. Real quick, uh, yes, just in case it's a little faint on the screen, what's the painting going to be of? What did you sketch out there? This is a little snowman. It's a cute little snowman in the snow. There's a couple birch trees behind it, a few weeds, sticks, all my favorite, dead grass, all my favorites, okay? okay. So, and that image we'll put a link to in the description of the video yes uh so if you want to transfer it or trace it onto your own watercolor paper to follow along you can use keith's drawing i'm uh i'm uh throwing it out here for you so uh it's fun it's cute i like it just because uh it's not too serious we're gonna kind of knock this one out so i start with the ultramarine blue okay i'm also going to pull a little um, oh, sorry. Uh, I believe this is a uh, Carmen. You can use uh, alizarin red, alizarin uh, crimson uh, if you don't have this. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other colors, but you know, magenta, uh, Carmen, I think any of them, the kind of pinkish red uh, colors will be fine. So I pull that in so that I mix that, a little of that with the ultramarine blue. I don't know if you can see this, but I like to do that and kind of make a kind of a pretty purple when I'm done, okay? So these are, I like the purple, kind of adds a little bit of, uh, a little more color, a little more substance to the, uh, to the things that we're painting, which is a lot of snow, you know, which is white with a lot of, bluish shadows to it. So a little bit of purple don't hurt. I'm going to begin uh, by, I think I'm going to start by kind of getting my snowman kind of shadowed out a little bit so that people can see it. So I'm using just the ultramarine blue. Unless I left a little bit of the pinky stuff in there. Might be a little bit of purple to it. I just want to kind of give it the feeling of a snowman. Now I don't believe I want a nice kind of textured snowman a little bit. I don't believe snowmen are quite all that round and smooth. This is not a uh, kids drawing snowman. Something a little more with a little more texture to it. So as you can see, I like to get that shadow in there. Now his head is under a hat, so I'm going to get a little more shadow under his head there too. 
I'm just glad you didn't go for yellow snow. Hey, that's going to be in the back. I, You know, if you're going to give all the secrets away, something a little more fun. All right, so I've got a nice shadow under his hat, too. So I'm just going to drag a little bit of that color out. But as you can see, he has a little bit of value now. Um, I'm going to come back in and add... Just a little bit more of the ultramarine blue, darken them up a little bit in the little shadowy areas, the bottom parts of the each each ball. Now uh, under his around his neck here is a scarf, so we're not going to see that one. All right, so I'm going to let that kind of set up in there. You don't have to be too serious about it. Just you know, give it the feeling that it has you know three bumps and that it's not a smooth surface. Um, when you roll a snowman, obviously you get all the little textures and stuff. Um, should probably throw in about 200 sticks and twigs too, right? And some grass. But that's another, that'll be another time. Yeah. Nope, nobody wants to spend eight hours yeah. painting a greeting card. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to kind of draw this tree in a little bit, a little bit darker so you can see it, hopefully. So as you can see, I've kind of drawn a tree behind this guy. And there's even a little bit of a something coming up back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them into birch trees. So I've done this before with you guys, but there ain't a whole lot to show. But I'll go ahead and start it. Well, that's a great reason to go back through some of Keith's older videos and find that birch tree. Yeah. Uh, tutorial. I think it's a three-parter. And this is, uh, there's not a lot showing, so what we're going to try to do is still convey the feel of it without killing ourselves. Uh, making too big of a production out of it. What I'm doing right now is I am wetting each branch. Um, and hopefully I'm not going to hit the snowman. Because the first color I'm going to put down is, again, uh, the ultramarine blue. You're like, what? You ain't got enough of that already? Yes, we do. So, what I'm creating is kind of like a shadow uh, on the branches themselves. So now I'm going to let that set up a little bit before I put my next color in. But I don't want it to dry completely. So my next color will be um, uh, Burnt Sienna. So, but i got to let that dry a little bit. What can I do in the meantime? Hmm. You could answer a quick question. Uh, oh, okay. So I was just thinking about this. So you're left-handed, so you're painting, and you're bringing your paints across the back side of what will be the finished card. Yes. For the right-handed people, it won't be an issue. Uh, would you normally ever put, like, a towel or tape another sheet over top of it so you don't get weird spatters and speckles on the... Well, if you're pretty sloppy or drippy or... Yeah, or yes, I am taking a chance here, uh, but... Um, yeah, I just put a piece of paper down. Just uh, uh, anything uh, will protect it. I also, uh, while I'm letting this dry, when you fold a card, you need to see which side that I am uh, that I've got the picture on. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's always this side. Okay, because if you don't, it will open the wrong way. Okay, so you want to make sure that it opens correctly, okay? So always, 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 it's gonna be on the, hey, what is that? Right-hand side, very good. I, I'll learn those someday. Okay, this is dried up uh, a little bit now. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the bird sienna. I'm just gonna run that, a little bit of that, down the center of these trees, very softly. Oh, that one didn't. Dried pretty quick, didn't it? Hmm. Okay, this one too. All right. So we're just going to kind of... I'm going to let that... I'm going to bleed that one out a little bit. Okay. Okay. 
So just a little bit of color there. Uh, this is fairly fairly strong, but you know what? We're going to need it. We're going to need that color just to kind of help create some value in this painting. And somebody told me it's going to dry 40% lighter once or twice. Too. Hey, that was me. Oh. <laughs> anyway, right now I'm making a little bit of a purple now to put over top of the brown. I'm going to push that kind of to the side. So what I'm creating is kind of like a shadow right down the right down the middle of this uh, of these trees on the back of these trees. You're going, "Well, what the, what they're, they're white." You know, these these things are white. But the color the the shadows are not. So what's nice about it is that it gives it a a little more life to the thing instead of just a white tree with black lines and black spots, this gives it a little more um, pizzazz, a little more uh, vibrancy to your watercolor. Um, so at this point, I'm going to let them dry up, and I'm going to move. Now down below here, I have created, um, I don't know if you can see them, but like little circular indentations in the snow. And basically what I want that to kind of represent is somebody been stomping through my you know around the snowman. They don't just crawl over and if you know what I mean. None of my snowmen have ever moved. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just giving it the feeling that there's a little bit of action in the snow that we've been kind of clomping around in. So, yeah, that looks looks pretty good. I'll let those dry. I'm going to leave the rest white. And I'll probably go in and shadow the bottoms of my little holes here in a little bit after after everything's kind of dried up. So, I'm actually amazed at how quickly everything's drying. We're not putting a lot of paint down. If you'll notice, I haven't, you know, wet great huge areas of uh, of this uh, piece just because it's not that you know it's small you can cover a lot with just a dry brush so you can work pretty quickly all right at this point I am going to throw in my world famous Mr. Hicks loves this uh, sticks and twigs no! yeah. and of course my favorite of all dead grass oh. I know it's supposed to be fresh, powdery, lovely snow. And it is. But every, you know... Hey, Grandma, look, I painted you this beautiful snowman on dead grass. With dead grass, I know. But it's a background. And it creates a, another little color in this painting so that it isn't all just blue. And it's kind of a, if you notice, it's a little bit on the orangey side. So the reason I do that is orange is a complementary color of blue, which complementary colors create the greatest contrast. So it's nice to have a little contrast in your painting. So, all right, so I kind of wet this area up, create a little bit of dead grass going. Hmm, I'll have a little back here too. Now, I'm not doing a whole lot of detail yet. I'm just kind of getting the base color in there. All right. And now, if you're wondering what I do, I'm just wiping my brush off. Uh, sometimes I like it damp. Now, here's something you guys can do at home. It's a paper towel. They cost hardly anything. Um, but, seriously, I just uh, bad habit, and I don't have not been able to get out of it. So, sure, all my clothes are strangely colored, but we can live with that. He wears a lot of black. Yeah, a lot of black. <laughs> Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. All right, so at this point, I want to do that sky, that little technique I was telling you about, about the um, where you use uh, sea salt or kosher salt to create like a maybe a snowy sky or snow. Uh, at the very least, you'll have a uh, kind of a fun texture and a weird colors kind of going on in the sky. Not weird color, but weird... Um, could look cloudy, might look cloudy. Depends on how you put your salt down. If you do it very wet, you'll get very ropey looking um, 
patterns. If you do it so it's not so wet, you'll get more like snow. So we're going to try to do it on the drier side. We don't have a lot of area to work on, but... Perfect. Think... And I'm going to pause these cameras real quick. Okay. Because they need to reset, and you can get the salt ready. And it sounds good. We'll let this dry up, too. All right. All right. Uh, I'm back. Uh, we let the uh, background dry a little bit. Uh, the, the background grasses that I threw in. Just a little bit of color. Uh, I'll be adding... Uh, a little more to it in a little bit. But right now what I want to do is show you how to do this uh, little sea salt trick, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the area now that I want to paint, okay? So I'm going to get it wet. Now you said sea salt and kosher salt. Can't right. I just use regular table salt? Like what I put on my food? No, uh, for some reason the ionized salt or iodized, I'm not sure which. Yeah, ionized. I'm not sure either. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, regular table salt is not, it just doesn't work the, the same. For some reason, um, you, you absolutely have, you could use rock salt. Um, <laughs> like that I use for my driveway? Yeah, I've used it. <laughs> but I kind of recommend you just get a little, uh, just go to the store, get some sea salt. Uh, not very expensive, and uh, it and you don't have to get the fancy pink sea salt for eight dollars a jar. Um, but any old uh, any old any old uh, sea salt will do. I got mine. <laughs> mine is a, a McCormick grinder thing because I don't want I don't want the pieces to be too big because I'm trying to do snow. So I kind of want these to be a little bit on the smaller side. So here I am. I've got this all wet up. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my ultramarine blue. So like I said, I'm, we're going to be using a lot of this color in this painting. Just because it's a cooler color. And I don't mean it's, you know, it's just a, it's a colder blue. And I like that for winter. You don't want a, you know, a warmer, you don't want cerulean. I mean, you could, but it just, to me, that's more of a summer color. So there's a couple sticks uh, for his hands that I'm not going to bother going around, okay? I'm just going to paint right through these because the sticks will be dark when I'm done. So I, I don't have to, I'm not going to worry about trying to go around them. All right, so I've got pretty good a pretty good amount of color blue in there I'm gonna get all the areas that are gonna be more or less scenery so I'm just giving myself a see the, the background grass there I'm just kind of giving myself a little bit of texture there Ooh, here's some here too all right so I think that's about it I still want to make sure I have enough blue in there to guarantee that the salt has something to play with. If it's too light, it'll, it won't be all that effective. Alright, so I got her. We got plenty of color there now. Now, as you can see, McCormick Sea Salt. Not a sponsor. Uh, but, I actually... Did an art show with uh, the granddaughter of Mr. McCormick that actually created the company. Uh, she was a feather artist, and I painted birds, and we did a show, uh, Birds of a Feather, and just saying, hey. I was say, aren't you clever? Yeah, no, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. She had the coolest house, too. Uh, just right. dawned on me, are you going to get salt all over my floor now? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a law. <laughs> anyway, as you can see... It's, you know, not too much, okay? Although, if you get... For this, we want a little more salt than usual. Because I want... Uh, now, I don't know what it does exactly. If the salt absorbs up and around, or it pushes away, I'm not exactly sure. But, um, we want enough salt on there that we get the spotty little effect so it'll look like it's kind of snowing. So, as you can see, 
I can't do much until it actually dries. Now you don't want to blow dry this. You don't want to just you just want to let it do its thing. Okay. So if I were to use a little, I would get more of a ropey effect. This should be a little more on the spotty side. Um, as a matter of fact, I can. Nah, I'll, we'll just go with this and we'll see what happens. Um, Mr. Mark, I, I'm not exactly sure how long this will take. Should we try to... I can't really do much of anything else either. That's fine, because I'll let the cameras run for now. Okay, just kind of uh, watch it. Yeah, because then I can speed it up so they can see how the effect goes with the little oh. timer that shows. Okay. Well, I wish there was a bigger piece to, to do this to show you, but this will it'll it'll do its thing. We'll do another video all about the salt, and so we'll show the different effects: the okay. finer, thicker, okay, uh, good. wetter, drier. Yeah, That's... you know, there's like is there anything you can think of. We'll do a a full on salt tutorial. That sounds good. That that's actually an excellent idea because it it it, it you really do have to kind of get the feel for what you're doing. Uh, if it's too wet, it, it, it's got to be just right. And just right in different stages to get different effects. Yeah, we'll so. do, we'll, we'll do uh, you know, kind of an artsy version and we'll do kind of a more scientific, like heavy water, yeah, salt, right. and like we'll show like how long it takes to... And that's not bad, four, maybe mm -hmm. four blocks or something like that. And yeah. Here's the drier method, the wetter, the... Rock salt. So the size of the salt also matters a lot. That's the other thing about I, uh, you, the regular table salt is it's so fine um, that it, it just, it, you know, it doesn't have the chance to really get the effect that we're looking for. Or just don't pay any attention and just be happy with whatever happy accident you get. That's what it is about, honestly. Um because uh, you never know. Uh, like I said, you never know. I wonder if uh, different water, different effects, you know? City water. Uh, mm. Yeah, deionized. Yeah, issues. the uh, delicious well water where I live. All right, salt is dry. Hi, everybody. The salt is dry. Arr. Dry salt. Old dry salts. Um, and... Uh, I've removed it. All you do is, you know, take it over the sink and just kind of scrub at it a little bit. And uh, I've gotten this kind of white textury effect. Uh, I, with a little less water, I've probably gotten a little more, a uh, little whiter little spots. But it's kind of fun. I like it. So we're going to kind of move on and I'm going to start finishing up the snowman, uh, putting the birch trees. Uh, together and uh, perhaps cleaning this up a little bit. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase a little bit of this pencil work I've got here. You might not be able to see it, but I can. And also when I do this, it kind of, I can see the watercolors. Less of the line work and more of, uh, you know, the color. So there we go. I got little things all over me. Probably. No more than usual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're no help. Hey, yeah, you drew attention to it. Yeah. Eraser crumbs. All right. So. There we go. All right. So now we're going to start detailing this guy out a little bit. So I'm going to start with this hat. Now I'm going to go with a... Kind of a boy. I don't even know what color that is. Uh, let's try another color. Let's add a little burnt sienna to this. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm actually thinking I want to gray it down a little bit. So since this is kind of orangey, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to my paint. Yeah, and it just kind of tones it down a little. Complimentary colors! Complimentary. So, I'm going to do the 
Not like they're going to say nice things about your painting complimentary, like what? opposites on the color wheel complimentary. Hey, you know, people will compliment you. People will, but the paint won't. Oh, no, that's true. My paint doesn't talk to me. If your does, we might have to go see somebody. Yeah, again. He's talking to his paint again. I talk to everything. I'm not talking to it, I'm just not being rude and responding. I, uh, mostly of late been talking to my television. Oh boy. I know. I'm not looking forward to that age. Yep. So in case you were wondering uh, and have never seen our videos before, Keith is using using using, 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 using Schminky brand pan paints. Uh, he's got a nice big tray there. Uh, he's had it for about six months, and I don't think he's put a dent in it too bad yet. Just a couple colors. I got a dent. And the uh, rest of it's awesome. He's got his uh, Lowell Cornell brush that he's painting with. Uh, he uses a couple different sizes and whatnot, but for these videos, he usually sticks to one or two. Well, these are, these are, it's a fairly small painting. So, yeah, I'm using, like, fours and sixes. Uh, the biggest thing I'm, I've used, I think, is an eight. So, he's right. I'm not, uh... And then, uh, always, and probably one of the most important things, is the Arches 140 Cold Press Watercolor Paper. Uh, he will switch to 300 pound occasionally if he's going to plan on putting a lot of paint down. And uh, if it's big. And big. Yeah. Probably what keeps it from warping as much. Yeah. I kind of like working, uh, and I like the texture. Okay. So uh, if you're... It's, it's a little it's a little coarser than the 140. Nice. So, so if you're interested in any of those products, uh, had the space heater on because it's cold in here. Wish you would have reminded me to turn that off you know before what? we started again. I'm never going to say turn off the heat. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't if, even if, notice it, actually. Yeah. Uh, but if you're interested in any of those products, we have links in the description below uh, to where you can purchase them. Uh, we get a small commission if you use the link. Uh, you don't pay any extra, but uh, we get a little something. Uh, but also feel free to use that just as a checklist on where to purchase the products locally uh, if you happen to have any art supply centers near you still. And consider yourself lucky if you do. <laughs> exactly. All right. So I got this little little hat hat on right now. It's gonna take me a couple couple coats to get what I want, but I I kind of like that. So we'll work with that. I do need a deep bright orange. Because I'm about to do the most important part. Mm -hmm. The signature. Yeah, that's it. The signature carrot. Sweet. That should be hopefully dark enough. And I am going to work with uh, a little bit of black and a little bit of sepia which is basically black and and uh van dyke brown i believe uh, but i want something pretty rich in color i think that might do it i'm about to attempt a tiny coal eye e coli oh e coli yeah all right And obviously, mouth. Cool. You know, I haven't painted a snowman uh, since I was in the fifth grade, I believe. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> All right. As you can see, I don't make them perfectly round because half the time when you're pushing a lump of coal into snow, 
or a charcoal briquette. They don't, they're not very even. So anyway, I think that works. And now with the same dark color, I'm going to do my sticks and twigs for his hands. They are fairly dark. What I'm going to do is I am going to add a little bit of water to this. And the reason I'm doing this is to actually kind of push the paint right to the edges. And that a lot of times helps to create very uh, distinct lines. I like that, okay. Because it does, it literally pushes the, the paint right up to the edges so that I get a hard line. That way, it doesn't have to be black black and I can create kind of a, a little more of a three-dimensional stick when I'm finished. Okay, so I've kind of got my um, snowman kind of put together. Obviously, I think it needs a little bit more uh, value to make the actual snow chunks. forgot. Huh. I forgot the scarf. So, oh boy, that's kind of bright. Um, there, that's better. So I'm going to do a very bright, happy, we're going to do a bright and happy scarf now. We want the scarf to look like it's falling down around a, a rounded piece of, you know, of the, of the body. What do you mean the camera's not on? Whoops! Yeah. <laughs> All right, so again, I'm probably going to take a little bit of water just to kind of, once again, kind of push the color to the edges, create a little bit of, I'm, basically what I'm trying to do is lift a little bit of color of the paint so that the scarf has a little bit of dimension to it. Oops. It's got a lot more in the back now because I... Okay. All right, good. All right, next. More salt. No. <laughs> no! No more salt for you. We are done with the salt. I'm going to take a little bit of indigo, a little bit of my burnt sienna. Going to start creating the little um, black marks on my
trees. <laughs> and my birch trees. So the idea is do not put them right in a row. Try to move them around a little bit so they don't they don't have to be round little spots either. So we don't have a whole lot of tree here to to show you, but you get the idea. Got my little dark spots. What I like to do is add a lot more dark. Just a little bit, a little bit of trying to break them up a little bit. So they're not just some round little thing. How's our time? You're okay right now. Okay, good. Other than all the motion sick uh, yeah. viewers at home. Am I spinning a little too quickly? All right, so I'm going to let them set up. Uh, while those are drying, I'm going to come in. I'm going to start adding just a little bit of fine line here and there in my grass that kind of sticks up. I like the, some of the grass to come out of the actual... Um, snow itself so as you can see then that other brownish color as you can see this is a little bit darker a little darker brown than what what I started with because I want these to be fine lines that Kind of gives the impression that the grass is a little broken up. Not sad broken up. All right. And I like to kind of take a little bit of water and kind of soften it a little. So it kind of blends in. All right. Let's see where we're at here. Okay. Now I'm going to try get a fine enough line for the birch trees. So what we want to do is like in little clumps of three, five, we want to do fine little, little lines to get the impression of a birch. You know how they have those fine little... Nope, never seen one before. They're, they're all over Michigan. You just gotta... I don't go outside. I know. They don't let me out. Production manager. He doesn't get to... He, he doesn't get to go outside. You're right. In a dark room editing film. It's sad. Okay. So I really didn't want this to be too serious a picture okay obviously hmm. so I don't want it to the next painting will be a little more serious right if you say so my next greeting card <laughs> this one's just kind of like I said you know maybe the kids can try so the base of uh the bases of um, birch trees tend to be a little bit dark. That's what I'm doing down here. I'm adding a little, little value. You just got to kind of, with a watercolor painting, you're going to work from dark to light. Okay, so get all your light colors in. And then we start working on the, you know, the deeper values. So that's what we've been doing 
of light. Um, all right. So we're just going to get a few lines on this one. Uh, as you can see, I kind of anchor my hand down when I'm doing fine lines. What I'm trying to do is I don't want to sit here and try to balance my hand and make it un so it's easier to kind of, once you get where you want to be, you just kind of keep it at the same height and you can just keep adding. Okay. If you'll notice, my little fine lines are actually got a little bit of curve to them. Because if they were straight across, it wouldn't look quite as, as three-dimensional, I think. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. So I just want to add a, maybe a little bit of character to the to the cloth. Soften this now, see? So we leave a little bit of it in there. So this wasn't 10 minutes, was it? No, a little over. Alright, so watercolors, it takes a little while to get things done. darker and just keep adding a few little light lines you know I think this guy would be more of an international man of mystery snowman of mystery if I got maybe just a little more shadow up under his hat so I'm gonna try that Thing. If you painted a bullwhip, it'd be the Indian Jones yeah. of... Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. I went very dark there. I'm probably going to... Blend a little bit of it away. <laughs> Great, now I got the Indiana Jones song in my head. Nothing wrong with that. So as you can see, I'm adding a little more shadow, a little more shadow. You're never sure until you kind of put some down and look at it. So yeah, could use a little more something. Again, I'm going to kind of just bleed a little bit of grass into the snow. And I'm going to add just a 
a little bit more shadow here. Just trying to get them to pop out just a little bit more. Any questions? No, I can't think of any. Okay. Letting you finish up. Uh, remind everybody once again, uh, links are in the description for where you can purchase the paints, the paper, the brushes, a uh, variety of miscellaneous items. Uh, we get a little commission if you purchase through our links. You don't pay anything extra. It's always greatly appreciated. Uh, check out Keith's online store. Uh, he's got some ready-to-hang canvas prints available, and hopefully we'll be adding more in the near future. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Be sure to subscribe and uh, like this video if you want to see more stuff like this. Leave us any comments with your questions or concerns, or uh, just say hi. Um, uh, yeah, we appreciate all comments, believe me. We learn as we go. How to better serve you, uh, and we and we have had a lot of good comments. And it has helped us to to grow. Okay, I'm gonna I'm kind of throw in a little bit of a shadow here. Yeah, I kind of like that. So, like I said. This was never meant to be too serious. Oh, it isn't. But you didn't leave any room to write happy holidays. Yep, that's on the inside. So. <laughs> and don't do it on the opposite, on the back <laughs> of the painting. You don't want it to accidentally bleed through. You don't want it to be on the back either. <laughs> All right, so. Just for giggles, let's say we're done. And actually, I'm gonna say we're about done. So what we're gonna do, very quickly, I'm just gonna add just a little bit more shadow in here, a little something down here. All right, so now at this point, what we wanna do is remove the tape so we can kind of see what it looks like as a finished product. Yay, yeah. we never removed the tape. Yeah. So, the other thing you might do is also, you know, do a little eraser, a little bit of eraser, clean it up. And that's just standard blue painter's tape, right? Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Um, I like the three quarter. Seems like it's, you know, just enough. Inch seems too much. <laughs> So, now I'm going to kind of give it its little, little bend. And you can put a picture of your family, write something, inspire. But, uh, throw the tape away. So... What else do we, how do I hold this? Right like that. Just like that? Well, All right. If you're going to face it this camera, then oh, oh, it's up to you. I should probably face the camera. Hmm. All right. So, thanks, everybody. This was this was fun. Like I said, no, nothing too serious. Um, but try out the uh, sea salt. Get a little piece of scrap paper and give it a try. Um, also, yeah, try it before you actually put it on your picture. So you can get a kind of feel how much water, because there is a touch to it, okay? Like I said, I might have gone with a little less water and gotten uh, little spots to be a little more whiter. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, anything else, Mark? Uh, no, not really. Don't forget, also in the description below is a link to get the line drawing that Keith started That's with. That's right. Uh, yeah. So you can do the exact same picture if you want. 
uh, or make your own. All exactly. the techniques that he used will work. Uh, you know, thanks for watching. Take care now. Bye bye.